Hello everyone, it's Ferdinand Dandy here and still in the DR100 Watt concept project. So what I have this Saturday is the uh, completed and working uh, module, the uh, digital power amplifier which is basically a class D amplifier. Here is the module. We call this module basically as a DR100 Watt PA. The PA means a power amplifier. The class D solution that uh, we have boarded here is the uh, solution from uh, NXP Philips TDA 8920 BTH, which is in the XSOP24 package. So um, this is the uh, chipset uh, that is mainly responsible for the uh, class D amplification. In the other video that I talked earlier, I have presented the block diagram of the module, this module, the DR100 Watt PA module. Please take a look at that video and see what makes this um, module composable. The major thing that I have to do today is to see the um, electrical performance of the module. So let's take a look at it. Let's see the setup in my vents, starting with the 220 volt AC power line. So I have here a power meter which reads the uh, AC power and it is connected to the uh, droider transformer. The droider transformer secondary voltage is at 2020 and um, it is uh, rectified and filtered by the split power supply board. The resulting voltage is uh, about uh, plus or minus uh, 20, uh, 28 volts and uh, I have here the uh, alligator clip which is um, monitoring the uh, positive side of the split power supply so that is the uh, rectified and filtered uh, supply of the class D amplifier that split power supply is uh, input into the power supply of the class D amplifier the PA DR100 watt PA Let's see the source of the uh, audio signal. So the audio signal is uh, from the arbitrary waveform generator of the oscilloscope and uh, it is set at uh, 1 kilohertz and about uh, 800 millivolt amplitude. It is input at the audio input of the um, amplifier. There is a mono signal and I have split it into stereo using uh, resistors. The audio output is taken at the speaker terminal and it is uh, loaded with 4 ohms resistive load. Both channels are driven with a 4 ohms resistive load. And the um, speaker output is uh, being monitored by the voltmeter for the DC offset voltage. Also, I tap the uh, oscilloscope probe at the speaker output uh, to see the waveform at the oscilloscope. For me, the very first test to be performed is the offset voltage. Uh, the offset voltage is that uh, DC voltage appearing at the speaker terminal. Theoretically, that should be zero but in the real world that can be uh, plus or minus um, in the order of millivolts uh, so I have set up the um, multimeter here set on the um, reading the uh, voltage uh, let's power on and quickly see the uh, offset voltage so in the left channel we have uh, minus uh, 37.36.1 millivolt uh, and um, we see the uh, offset voltage on the right channel I don't have to power off now just uh, carefully transfer the alligator clip on the other side so we have uh, 58 uh, minus 58.8 on the right channel you can say then that uh, the minus 58.8 uh, millivolt DC is uh, appearing at the speaker so this is uh, being fed at the um, uh, resistive load currently. 
I have to make sure the DC output voltage at the speaker immediately after the LC filter so that I can know uh, what is the uh, reading immediately before uh, the speaker protector. The problem with the speaker protector is that uh, it will take about 6 seconds before it will give an output. Uh, in this test, the offset voltage is taken when there is no input uh, sine wave. So let's take a look at the offset voltage when uh, we apply the sine wave signal. So it is then minus 58 and as soon as we input uh, the sine wave signal, it uh, goes into the positive. That is okay. And now we are at the maximum uh, voltage swing at the speaker and uh, we are reading uh, plus uh, 21.6 uh, millivolts. The offset voltage can be uh, a plus or minus uh, voltage reading and um, if I remember right in a class AB amplifier the specification is a plus or minus uh, 50 millivolt DC. With this uh, reading which is a uh, minus uh, 59.3 millivolts that's already exceed the plus or minus uh, 50 millivolt DC and um, well, I'm just gonna take note all this uh, uh, data gathered from this test uh, and I'm going to furnish that to my uh, teammates and um, we're going to furnish that as well to the uh, guy who is expert in class D. And uh, this is the uh, minimum volume and uh, we are reading uh, a signal of about um, 400 millivolt of a uh, unknown frequency let's see that one reducing the um, and there you are it's coming out uh, and we are reading now uh, 304 millivolt of uh, 332 kilohertz so let's zoom it let's just take note of that because the, in a class AB amplifier we don't see this um, output signal when the um, volume is at the minimum basically this is the reason why we can see the output of the uh, uh, class D amplifier well I'm referring to this uh, module I'm not so sure about other class D amplifier or class T amplifier but I'm seeing here that the uh, reason why the um, sine wave output uh, is a little bit thicker as compared to class A or class AB amplifier so we can say that the, um, the 332 uh, kilohertz, kilohertz is uh, riding on the sine wave signal. seven boarded swing when the speaker is loaded with a 4 ohms resistive load so let's uh, increase that to maximum and see what is the voltage swing oops I go in the reverse direction so increasing increasing and uh, we can see a distortion on the top uh, and uh, bottom of the sine wave signal so that's um, emphasized that uh, the maximum uh, voltage swing has been reached uh, let's take a look at this reading um, I don't know what is 10% distortion or 1% distortion because I don't have the uh, distortion meter so uh, what is the reading at that time it's a 13. Uh, let's say 13.3 volt RMS uh, and uh, yes it's a little yes it's a little bit of power by using the power formula that is the voltage uh, multiplied by itself 13.2 and divide by the uh, uh, 4 ohms load so this divided by 4 
so it gives you a power of uh, come on do I know how to use the calculator divided by 4 and that is uh, 43.56 watt this is the average power uh, we can get from uh, one channel so uh, um, where we are saying this is 100 watt uh, power amplifier so uh, how did it happen so we have to multiply that by 2 and we still get the 87.12 stereo power and uh, we don't reach uh, 100 watts so what happened let's see once again I may be uh, doing it the wrong way let's see the reason why uh, I can get a uh, maximum uh, output power of 100 watt uh, from uh, the uh, DR100 watt uh, PA module so we are reading here at 29.5 uh, on the positive side of the split power supply when there is no input signal and uh, let's watch it out uh, at that maximum voltage swing so uh, the 28 or 29 goes down to 26 and uh, at maximum voltage swing we get that 25 so again that is 29 at no input signal and becomes 24 when the signal is at maximum okay so let's see what uh, this specification says that um, the output power at the 4 ohms load this is the 4 ohms load with a 10% distortion at 27 volt is um, 86 watt and um, we should be able to get an 86 watt when the voltage is at 27 volts at 10% distortion and going back to the test bands um, I don't know again what's 10% distortion but uh, the problem here is that I cannot maintain the 27 volt to its maximum the voltage is dropped to 25 or 24 volts so there is something wrong and this power supply I mean uh, maybe not something wrong but maybe that is the um, uh, real world performance of the toroidal transformer and the split power supply see again there you are it goes down so what I have to do now is to simply um, wrote down all this observation and uh, let me discuss it with some expert of a class D amplifier. Hey guys, uh, I am back in my uh, test vents. Uh, and uh, I have here the uh, class D uh, expert <laughs> come on <laughs> don't do that and uh, he will join me to evaluate the uh, class D amplifier I borrowed an SMPS power supply and uh, here it is I uh, set the output to uh, 30 volts plus or minus 30 volts and I'm reading uh, 30.09 on the positive side of the split power supply and let's repeat the test uh, no sine wave and, uh, uh, almost full load the uh, input supply voltage is uh, basically constant and uh, we are reading at this one now is about uh, 16 or 17.7 uh, voltage swing of the output uh, so uh, again I don't know what is 10% distortion but um, let's just assume that uh, that is a 10% distortion I mean let me assume it uh, that is uh, E squared divided by R and I'm going to take the uh, maximum voltage swing on the uh, right channel which is 17.17 uh, 17. 
multiplied by the voltage itself 17.17 divided by the uh, 4 ohms uh, resistive load and we get uh, 73.7 uh, average power or uh, sometimes we call it the um, RMS power that is about uh, 74 let's just say uh, 74 so we got 74 watt uh, RMS uh, per channel and um, we can multiply it by to have uh, 148 uh, average power stereo power the immediate conclusion right now is that uh, the power amplifier module which is uh, we have here uh, can greatly improve the uh, power capability output uh, by maintaining the um, input voltage to plus or minus uh, 30 volts as you can see again the uh, voltage uh, maintained basically at 30 volts at maximum voltage swing it's getting warmer as the sun rises uh, and it's now about uh, 9 uh, o'clock in the morning it takes a uh, longer time for me to do the testing especially when my son is uh, keep coming here there are other tests that uh, can be performed with the class D amplifier like for example is the um, total harmonic distortion I don't have the uh, test equipment to measure that uh, the uh, stereo separation and also the signal to noise ratio I did not test them um, I'm going to test them uh, next time what I'm going to do now is to um, have my family go out, go shopping and uh, everything that is uh, to do with the family on Saturday. Cause I'm gonna do it.